Hello and welcome to Climate Check. I'm your host, Mary Mwekisa. Thank you so much for making time to tune in to this program. Now, today on the program, we'll be focusing on climate communications, the importance of communicating the climate change subject in a simplified manner and in a manner that every person will understand. And so I'll be talking to an award-winning climate change and environment reporter, Lucky Piri from ZNBC. And I will also be speaking to other stakeholders in this regard. Also on the program, we will hear from the voice of the young people that are involved in climate action. And this is no other than Blutus Mbambi, who is a national youth climate negotiator. This and much more make up this episode of Climate Check. We'll take a break. Now imagine if trees could provide Wi-Fi, just how many trees you would plant? Well, they provide oxygen. We definitely cannot do without it. Destruction of nature such as forests has led to irreversible climatic changes to our world. Join me as I talk to policy formulators, change makers and climate change interest groups on Climate Check weekly on this channel. Now you are the solution to climate change. Welcome back to Climate Check. I'm now joined in studio by Blutas Mbambi, who is a National Youth Climate Negotiator. Blutas, thank you so much for making time to come to Climate Check. It was my pleasure. All right. Now, uh, I think let's first start by understanding uh, the work that you do as a youth negotiator. What does this mean for somebody that doesn't understand? So basically, we, we negotiate on, on, on behalf of the, the young people in our country. Okay. We've got so many issues on uh, communication, uh, climate finance, mm -hmm. uh, nature-based solution. Okay. Also, we have a lot of young people to participate in uh, negotiation, mm -hmm. transparency and governance, good governance. So as young people, we always come together every year. Like this year, we're hosting a local conference of youth, I mean regional conference of youth on climate change. Oh, you've taken where, it to the region now. Yes, now okay. where the southern African countries are coming in Zambia and mm -hmm. create a position paper that we are going to help the government to understand what issues young people are going through mm -hmm. prior to the COP29 mm -hmm. in uh, Mm -hmm. So this is a pleasure where we are going to have 300 young people across uh, Southern Africa to come together from different uh, backgrounds to give us what really they are going through mm -hmm. and how best we can solve those issues as young people okay. in Africa or at Southern Africa and uh, our neighbors also. Mm -hmm. We are going to have people with different backgrounds, expertise are going to advise us. Okay. So, yeah, we are doing okay. okay. But hoping that more young people are going to be involved by the end of the day. Okay. Uh, let's now understand some of the works that you've uh, engaged in in the past. I have seen you at various conferences. I saw you, I think, at the COP27 in Egypt. Mm -hmm. I also saw you at COP28 in Dubai. So, during such conferences, how are the young people treated in terms of participation in negotiations? Because I know those are high-level meetings. You have all these technocrats, different types of um, people from different walks of life, negotiating for what is good for their country, for that part of, of the continent. Uh, it's a jungle where people just go to get what they can get, and it's all borders down to finance. As a young person, how do you think the young people are integrated in these negotiation processes? As for now, I think uh, for the past years, it wasn't that good, but for now I've seen young people from various countries like Ni uh, Nigeria, Kenya, they are fully participated. But in our country, mm -hmm. we have few young people due to funding, uh, mm -hmm. capacity building, because negotiation, you can go to COP20, COP processes, but if you don't understand mm -hmm. what is really going on, you can't even understand anything. You won't even know which meeting to attend. Yes, yeah, so basically mm -hmm. I encourage young people to have a capacity building to orient themselves what issue they're going to follow. At least follow two issues or one issue if you are starting this issue. You can't go all over and start mm -hmm. uh, negotiating on behalf of it. We can make mistakes, you know. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of issues going on. But what I encourage my fellow young people is that we need to orient ourselves. We yes. need to have capacity building to understand what issue of best interest of our country that we can venture into it. Is it climate finance? Mm -hmm. It was some damage or communication or mm -hmm. young people at heart. So we need to see our best. We can mobilize resources and support ourselves in the various projects. So at the corporate, so many things happen. Mm -hmm. So our best interest as young people, so we go there to network, to okay. find uh, uh, scholarship, okay. funding, 
you know, also, uh, just could take that we can help us in our small project. We know young people can embrace ourselves, so we need funding as well by the end of the day. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I know that young people um, are considered the most vulnerable in, to climate change because they have a you have a longer lifespan, so you are you are more poised to to experience the the impacts of climate change for a longer period than somebody who is already seventy years old compared to you. What are some of the most pressing issues for you as a young person in terms of climate action that really need urgent urgent attention? As for me, because when we look at the status of a country, Zambia, right now, so what we need right now is most of adaptation measures and mitigation measures. Mm -hmm. You know, we had this emergency that our president uh, announced. Yes. Drought. So we need more projects to prevent that future and certain issues to happen in Zambia. So we need more action, more project on energy. Mm-hmm. Road shedding right now, we have road shedding because we depend on water. Yes. So if you have other sources, we can't even have this problem, but we need more mitigation measures. For example, carbon market project. We have energy sector in agriculture, also adaptation project that can help the community to stop doing whatever they are doing, at least mm-hmm. they adapt to the changes. We need more awareness on ground. I think we can have awareness, but if we don't have the resources, the uh, innovation and research that need to be done on ground, then we're not doing anything. So we need to see how much emission are we mitigating by 2030? Yes. So how far have we gone? How, how, what are the percentage do we have right now? As, as a young person, I know that you're also studying. Um, you tell us about your studies because I know that it's, it's climate related. And for me, it, it, it's very gratifying to know that we're building solid negotiators who speak with uh, you know, uh, academic uh, credence even as you speak in a meeting. And it's, it's very important for the young people that are going to carry on with these negotiations negotiations going forward to have the right knowledge for this subject. So so my program in France is a research-based program that's deal with modeling, predicting how the future looks like. Okay. What solution we can uh, invent into nature-based solution, ecology and biodiversity, using different tools as installation, like how best we can restore water, forestry, how best we can work with indigenous people, local people, how best we can embrace that uh, local uh, base ecosystem knowledge in working with the chief. So that's how we basically uh, deal with. But we go extra mile working with different um, researchers. So we are involved in different uh, research. Mm-hmm. Right now I'm working for um, my university to deal with the research in France okay. on a carbon market. So okay. I'm always a pleasure to work with different uh, uh, background, mm-hmm. knowledge, professors. So learning from our country, Zambia, the group of negotiators. Recently I was in law to to be trained as a group of negotiators by AGN. So okay. this is an opportunity for me to learn and hoping for more opportunities by the, by the end of the day. Welcome back to Climate Check. Right now I'm joined by an award-winning climate change journalist, uh, multiple award-winning climate change journalist. Actually, he's a reporter uh, from ZNBC Newsroom, and um, this is no other than Mr. Lucky Piri. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for inviting me. I'm excited. Me I, I never thought in my life I'd interview you. <laughs> Well, you are. Yes. No, I'm honored, <laughs> yes. actually. I'm humbled that you, 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 you accepted our invitation. Mm-hmm. And today I'm, I'm focusing mostly on climate communications. Right. And the role of a reporter is very critical in raising awareness, mm-hmm. uh, informing, educating the public about climate change. Yes. And then the normal trend we've seen in, 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 in our country is that there's a lot of interest in politics mm-hmm. uh, and other, other aspects of uh, storytelling, but not climate change. I'll start by asking you... Mm-hmm where the interest came from to report on climate change (laughs) and environmental stories? Well, the interest started way back when I was in college, at Evelyn Horn College. And uh, I remember when I was in third year, I I did a story on uh, on, on indiscriminate waste disposal. Okay. Yes, which I filmed by myself and edited it and brought it to ZNBC. By then I wasn't Employed. employed, yes. Okay. So I brought it to TV2 newsroom and uh, it was aired. Wow. 
And when it was aired, there was a time when Miss Zambia advertised for their awards. There was the category, environment uh, category. So I entered that story under TV category and mm. I won it. Wow. So since then, I've been doing stories on garbage and mm. I also uh, extended my reporting to climate change because mm -hmm. these things work hand in hand. Environment and climate change, they mm -hmm. work hand in hand. Mm -hmm. And um, that's that's where I started from. And mm -hmm. here I am, I have continued doing stories on climate change yes. as well as issues that are actually affecting people as a result of climate change. Okay. And, and now let's, let's talk about... Um, what you think is the current status quo even in our press print uh, electronic do you think we are doing enough coverage of environment and climate change stories as journalists i don't think so like you said from the preamble you find that uh, we concentrate much on other bits and the climate and the environmental uh, stories are rarely uh, done by us journalists mm -hmm. Um, you may find that ten out of uh, out of ten journalists, you find that only two are reporting about environment and climate change, and uh, that's where we start. We we we, we need to. Uh, start thinking now to say how do we uh, bring journalists on board. We are just from celebrating World Press Freedom Day mm -hmm. and the emphasis was about uh, ensuring that journalists uh, take interest in these yes. issues. Right now we are talking about the drought situation which affected Zambia and um, just talking about it only uh, people will not understand. Exactly. Uh, because if you look at the drought situation right now uh, it has brought us where we are today. We have load shedding, mm -hmm. we have water crisis, even traditional ceremonies have been affected. Yes. The Kuomboka traditional ceremony, they had difficulties mm -hmm. just to have a successive ceremony because mm -hmm. they didn't have enough water. Uh, water. Yes. So all those issues are uh, as a result of climate change. And this is where, as journalists, we need to step in and uh, do stories uh, around those issues. Because if you just say climate change, climate change, environment environment we don't really uh, explain to people mm -hmm. people will not understand they'll continue doing exactly things which are contributing to the uh, 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 to climate change mm -hmm. yes what are some of the highlights of your stories that have won awards i know recently you you scooped um, several awards at the um, uh, zema awards yes yes what are some of the highlights of of of, of, of the many stories that you've done <laughs> the ones that you always love to to look back at look back on. <laughs> First of all, uh, talking about the awards themselves, yes. I started entering Zema Awards a long time ago. Okay. Um, when I just joined ZNBs, I was uh, entering um, awards here and, and there under Zema because of the, the interest I've, yes. I've already mentioned uh, with issues to do with environment and climate change reporting. But I never used to win. There's just a time when I won, uh, I, I came out as second runners up. Okay. And then uh, I remember uh, being encouraged by some people to say, just continue entering yes. and just continue working. And one day you win, one day. Mm -hmm. So I continued doing those stories and I didn't stop because I wasn't winning. Mm -hmm. So I continued and I continued entering those awards. And here I am. Yes. Uh, in the previous years, I've actually won quite a number of awards yes. under the uh, climate and environment uh, reporting. And um, some of the stories which have actually won me those awards are just the same uh, stories we do every day on yes. climate change and on floods, on garbage, mm -hmm. on um, uh, issues of drought. Like I said, we are, we are, we are, we are struggling with drought. Yes. And these are things that have been there. They have not come today. Mm -hmm. And so some of us, we've taken interest to highlight those issues. And these are issues that have actually uh, won me awards. Okay. Yes. Now let's talk about the setup in the newsroom. Um, yes. I know that as a, as a reporter, you will uh, you do your story ideation. You, you you pick an angle. You do the story. Mm -hmm. But beyond you, there's uh, maybe a team of people that will select which stories should be priority. The top stories, the yes. ones that are making it to the headlines, <laughs> the ones that will come in between, and the ones that are, will be put aside. Yes. Um, what is your general assessment in many newsrooms? I feel this is the situation in most newsrooms because yes. I think uh, uh, people want to read, watch, listen to the stories that are happening most and mm -hmm. imagine 
someone does a story on climate change, which is almost, I can say, it's it's a flat story mm -hmm. at that particular time. Not that it's bad. Mm -hmm. It's a good story, but maybe mm -hmm. because it doesn't fit with what is happening at that particular moment, you yes. find that it will be put aside because mm -hmm. of what I've already mentioned to yes. say. Uh, there are situations that are happening at that particular moment. And so people think uh, maybe this one can, can cannot air today mm -hmm. or cannot be published today mm -hmm. because we need to concentrate on these on issues. On the political story, which yes. has just broken. Yes. Mm -hmm. How best should stories be packaged? Because I know climate change is a scientific topic. Mm -hmm. topic. So it's very difficult to... Uh, to spice it up mm -hmm. because it, it has to do with facts. Mm -hmm. so, so how best should these stories be told so that they are appealing even to the editors and but most importantly, they are interesting to listen to for the viewers, for the listeners. Mm -hmm. You've already mentioned to say, uh, as we do these stories as journalists, we need to add human face and also look at the statistics and also bring out how uh, people are affected by by climate change itself, even the, the, the bad practices that are, are happening in our communities that are affecting the environment. Mm -hmm. There's always a way in which a, a story can be done in an impactive manner, mm -hmm. such that even if um, the people that always sit to select stories for news, they will, they, will, they will definitely consider it because of the way you've done that story. We've also seen a, a, a political will from government where yes. we've seen the, the coming of uh, the green economy and the environment ministry. Yes. We never had this ministry, but this time we have this ministry mm -hmm. where we can always go and uh, get interviews and mm -hmm. information about climate change, what the ministry is doing to ensure that we, we, we keep the impact of climate change. Mm -hmm. And we also work with other stakeholders to ensure that we fight this uh, uh, sketch. Mm -hmm. Now imagine if trees could provide Wi-Fi, just how many trees you would plant? Well, they provide oxygen. We definitely cannot do without it. Destruction of nature such as forests has led to irreversible climatic changes to our world. Join me as I talk to policy formulators, change makers and climate change interest groups on Climate Check weekly on this channel. Now you are the solution to climate change. Okay, my name is uh, Gravaja Zulu, I'm controller news, uh, TV1. I think our focus on uh, climate change is, is, is immense uh, because we understand that uh, basically the economy now, uh, people's livelihoods are all affected by, by climate change. And usually when we look at government policy, government uh, programs and government pronouncements, they all speak to that direction. For instance, I'll give you an example that uh, in 2021, the president created a ministry of green economy. And uh, that speaks to the volume and, and, and emphasis that government policy attaches to issues of climate change and green investment. And from that, as people that have to communicate uh, and inform and educate the people, we pick the theme also from there and, and run with it. So if you can see much of our um, news, we almost every day have a story that has to do with climate change. Mm. And just to re-emphasize the importance of that, we also have an environment segment, uh, which we run every Sunday in our main news, and that's, we, we do it in partnership with Zafiko, who are part of the sponsors of the segment. Mm. And there we bring out the stories uh, that affect people in terms of um, environment, in terms of um, uh, climate change, how can we protect our environment, how can we counter, mitigate climate change, how can we, how can the nation invest, how can the nation go green, and we have all these stories that we tell around those themes. And currently we're talking drought, uh, and all these are results of uh, climate change, uh, and how has it impacted the nation in a very huge way. and and. It's a national disaster now, and government is trying to mop up resources and trying to push resources to to mitigate the drought from other equally important areas. So it's up to us as a media to make the people understand that if we can uh, put in place mitigation measures, then uh, uh, climate change will not impact us as badly as it as it would ideally uh, do. 
So that's the role we have. It's a, it's a big task, but I think we're trying as much as we can to see that we take out the message to the people. What, what difference do you think these stories are making in this country? I think they are. Um, I think they are. Uh, for instance, some of the pronouncements, like you know, sometimes there's been a ban on, on charcoal burning and trading. And when we uh, take out these stories and we go down to, to, the, to the ground and people begin to understand the reason why uh, government is trying to control charcoal burning. Uh, when we put out stories that encourage people to plant trees, uh, we cover stories of people that are uh, putting back the trees into the environment. And people begin to understand what that is all about. And then they do it also at a smaller level, a small scale, at their farms, at their plots. When we discourage them, when we encourage them to have a tree at least, uh, we discourage them from cutting all the trees. And I, I think they're picking the messages. And, and when people begin to understand that, for instance, uh, issues like drought as a result of climate change, then they know how how to how to 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 be ready and how to to try and mitigate the impact. Mm. Uh, let's talk about the actual uh, reporters that uh, tell this climate change story. We know that climate change affects every sector, be it energy, be it health, be it agriculture. So many sectors. Mm. At the point of story ideation, is there? Uh, deliberate encouragement for the storytellers to create their own agenda sometimes, to tell the story through their own lens, other than uh, telling the story through, through the lens of who said what at which event? Yes, uh, sometimes we do take off ourselves and, and, and get a journey to do something that people have probably forgotten about, or probably something that people do not talk about. Um, for instance, just last week, one of our reporters did a, an in-depth uh, into lead poisoning and lead pollution in carbon. That's a story that had not been told, I think, in a long time. We, we, it, was, it was one of the top stories for a long time. Then it went down, and we had to go back in there and see how are people living? What are the measures being put in, in there? How is government trying to, uh, to ensure that this thing is conclusively dealt with? So it was an in-depth story that is out of the ordinary, not out of what what we we'll do as a what we call scheduled assignments where we wake up and we're invited to come and do this and invited to come and do this other story and lastly uh, as controller for news uh, how are you ensuring that climate change stories are told not that you should control the narrative that the, the, the reporter wants to take but are told in a solution oriented way because we know that climate change and like other subjects is looking for as many solutions as possible so i think it's almost like a almost like a silent policy. Uh, there's always the so what kind of uh, question when, when a reporter tells a story, uh, then we say, so, so what? So if the people, you've told them, that, yes, there's deforestation, so so what? Yeah. So then we go further, we need to tell the solution. We, we, we just don't dump the problem onto the people and walk away. Uh, that's why you see that uh, most of our stories are multi-sourced. If it's a report and if it's a packaged story, it will be multi-sourced. It will have the policy makers. It will have the people at the center of it all. And it will have the people that have been impacted. And then it will have, where are we going? So it's a, it should always be a component of our stories. Uh, yeah, if, we talk, if we talk about too many boreholes in one area and being sunk, uh, who's at the center of it? It's the people, do they understand it can lead to contamination? Do they understand these this, this distances? Then, then we get to this to the uh, warmer. Then we go to government. What is the solution? What are we doing? So always for us, it's uh, it's always what message does the person go home with? What's the takeaway message from our stories? And it's a wrap. We'll be back again next week. Same time, same channel on the program. Thank you so much for your time. Do make sure you do something for your environment, for your planet, because we only have this very planet. Thank you so much for watching Climate Check. I'm Mary Mwikisa. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.